guys, welcome back to in case of econ struggles, welcome to another AP micro struggle. Today I'm talking about topic 4.2, which is about monopolies. We're going to talk about how a monopoly firm works, both in terms of a monopoly market, as well as how a monopoly firm works. Because again, we're talking about monopoly, so the entire market is one firm. Here are the three things you need to know for the AP micro exam about the monopoly market. You need to know that monopoly appears because there's barriers to entry. So one firm is able to get in and prevent any other firm from entering the market. So there's only one firm and monopoly market. Then we're going to talk graphically about monopoly. I'll show you the graph and we'll derive a new one together. And then I'm going to talk about natural monopolies in terms of what they are, why they appear, and why they make sense. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. But let's go ahead and get right into it. So here is the pre-drawn graph for a monopoly market. Just like we talked about before in video 4.1, when we talked about a typical graph, we have a demand curve that looks like this. We have a marginal cost curve that looks like this. What we're going to do to find the optimal quantity is we're going to solve the profit maximization problem. And so we're going to say marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And so that is at this point right here. But that just tells us the quantity. That doesn't tell us the actual price we're going to charge. To find the actual price that we're going to charge in the market, we're going to follow this quantity all the way up to the demand curve. And we're going to go over to the price and that's going to tell us the price the monopoly is going to charge. So notice that this gray point right here, if I were to add the price, you can see that this monopoly market is going to look something like this, where the price is right here, and the quantity is at this gray Q star PC. And so the deadweight loss compared to a perfect competition market is the area drawn in gray, because if we were in perfect competition, then the price would be down here, and so all of these people would be willing to buy whatever this monopoly is selling. And a firm that wasn't a monopoly would want to sell all of these items right here to people. And so our surplus would increase by this triangle amount right here. Again, we've talked about all of these concepts in past videos. But if any one of those is confusing you in this particular video, drop a comment below and I'll try to explain it better. But maybe I'll just draw this graph over here to the side just so we can see both the graph that's pre-drawn and the graph that I'm drawing right now. So here's Q and here's P. We've got a demand curve that's going to look something like this. The marginal demand curve is going to start at the same place as the demand curve, but it's going to finish somewhere to the left of the original demand curve. So here's our marginal revenue curve. Our marginal cost is going to look something like this. And so what we're going to do to find the monopoly quantity is we're going to find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that's right here. We're going to follow that straight up to the demand curve. And then we're going to go straight over to the y axis. And that's going to tell us our P star and monopoly setting. And again, this orange dot is going to tell us the Q star and monopoly. If I wanted to find the optimal quantity and price in a perfect competition market, I would find again where marginal cost is equal to demand instead of marginal revenue. So that's going to be this point right here. And then I would once again go over to the y axis to find the price in a perfect competition. And I would go straight down to find the quantity in a perfect competition. So you can see that compared to perfect competition, a monopoly has lower quantity and a higher price. Now you can also see if I were to draw an average total cost curve on this graph, maybe I will go ahead and draw that in purple. So here's the average total cost, where it's gonna come in like this, it's gonna to touch at the minimum, and then it's gonna go back up. So here's average total cost. And you can see that the price is above average total cost, which means we're making positive profit in both the short run and the long run, for all the reasons we've talked about in previous videos. And this sort of concludes what I'm gonna talk about in terms of monopolies for this video. So if you're confused about this, drop a comment below. But let's briefly wrap up by talking about what natural monopolies are and why they exist. So why do natural monopolies exist and what are they? A natural monopoly is a setting in which it makes the most sense to only have one company be involved in the market. So what in the world does that mean? So in a natural monopoly, you can think about it in terms of power grid. So there are power lines that bring power to your house. And it's not the case that you have 10 different companies all connecting power lines to your house. The same generally with cable companies. You might only have one cable company in your area. And so those are generally government approved. 
And the reason they make sense is because it doesn't make sense to have 10 different sets of power lines bringing power to everyone's house. That would be ridiculous. That would be so many power lines and it doesn't make sense to have 10 different companies all keeping 10 different power lines just to supply the same house with potentially different power. So you can say that it makes sense to only have one power company. The fact that we only have one power company means it's a monopoly, but it's a natural monopoly because it makes intuitive sense to have a monopoly in that situation. So hopefully this helps you a little bit understand monopolies and natural monopolies. If you still got questions, comment below. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments as well. And if you're finding these videos generally helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.